Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new YubiKey Bio series of hardware security keys from Yubico. Now, in this video, we are going to be covering a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to cover the two new models of YubiKey Bio keys that have just come out. We're going to talk about which models of YubiKey might be right for you. We're going to enroll this Bio key along with our fingerprint and show you how to do that in Windows as well as with the YubiCo Authenticator. We're going to use the Bio key to log into a FIDO2 authenticated service. And then finally, we're gonna talk about Microsoft Windows passwordless login. All of that is going to be in this video and you can check down in the description for time codes if you wanna jump around instead of watching the whole thing. Before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions if you haven't done so already. It's absolutely free and really, really helps out the channel when you do so. The links for all products mentioned in this video will be down in the description below and there's also a link to buy me a beer if you wanna do that. Okay, so let's get started. This right here is the YubiKey Bio. And what you can see with this little black circle right in the middle here, that is a thumbprint reader. And this thing is super, super thin. Uh, this is the USB type A model. They also have a YubiKey C Bio uh, right here, which we're gonna set up in this video. And this one is the USB type C version. Now also notice, that these say YubiKey Bio Fido Edition, which means they might have other biometric editions coming out. I'm not sure what that means. Like, why would they specify Fido Edition if there weren't more editions on the way? So we're gonna talk about that towards the end of the video. But first, let's dig into the keys that they actually sent me. So the USB Type A version is the YubiKey Bio. MSRP on this product is $80 per key. Then we have the YubiKey C Bio. This is the USB Type C version. MSRP on this guy is $85 USD. And looking at the product page for these keys, we can see that they support FIDO2 slash WebAuthn as well as U2F authentication. They work out of the box with Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, Linux, Chrome, as well as the Edge browser and they secure your accounts mostly with FIDO2 by not only having to have the hardware key plugged in when you want to access whatever service or program you're trying to access but then you also need to provide a fingerprint so you know with the old school YubiKeys right so this is the YubiKey 5 series now this is the version that i use most often the 5 Series NFC, this is a USB Type A with NFC capability as well. And while this does provide much better, stronger authentication security than not having a security key, it's still something where it's not biometric, right? You can just basically plug this in when asked for it and just touch the gold contact right here to say, yes, here is my key and I am touching it, but if someone knows your password and they have your key, they can still get in. Whereas with the biometric key, they can know your password, they can have your key, but without your fingerprint, they still cannot get in. So it just adds that extra layer of security at the hardware level above and beyond any of the other uh, YubiKey devices. That being said though, that doesn't necessarily mean that the YubiKey Bio is right for you, and I'm certainly not recommending that everyone go out and buy one. What I would recommend is check what programs and services are compatible with the YubiKey Bio before you purchase. And there's a very easy way to do that. If we look at this page here, it's the Getting Started with YubiKey Bio page. This can be found at yubi.co slash bio. And it tells you how to enroll your fingerprints and whatnot, but if you scroll down here, this shows you all of the applications that are FIDO2 compatible with this device. And there's a lot of really popular ones on here. Google, AWS, Coinbase, Twitter, Facebook, uh, GitHub, right? Uh, Brave browser, Microsoft Edge browser, Citrix, right? YouTube. There's just a ton of stuff that you can use the YubiKey Bio with today, but there's also a lot of stuff that you can't. So for instance, if we look at these password managers, like 1Password and Bitwarden are both compatible. They both have FIDO2 capability, but like LastPass does not, 
right? So LastPass is just sort of the standard Yubico OTP compatibility. And in addition to that, there is one piece of the puzzle where the YubiKey 5 series definitely has the advantage, and that is for your TOTP codes. So when I say TOTP, that's time-based one-time password authentication. The six-digit codes that you typically use with like a Google Authenticator or Authenticator app on your smartphone, these can also do those one-time passcodes using the Yubico Authenticator app whereas the one-time passcodes are not possible with this biometric device. That means that with the biometric device, you have to have this device for any of your FIDO2 authentication, such as Google and Microsoft and Bitwarden and Facebook, whatever supports it according to this list, but whatever doesn't support it, you have to have a separate authenticator such as the Google Authenticator app installed on your smartphone device or you can carry around a separate Yubico just for the TOTP codes and then have a different one for FIDO2, right? It starts getting a little bit a little bit crazy. Like I wish there was a way to have sort of an all-in-one key and that's something I'm gonna talk about a little bit later towards the end of this video. So bottom line is do your research before purchasing any of these hardware keys. This YubiKey Bio I see as more of a key for organizations to help secure their employees with stronger biometric uh, authentication, whereas the YubiKey 5 series, I think is a much more general purpose hardware key that would work for you know, a greater percentage of people than the BioKey would. Okay, so how do we enroll YubiKey Bio in Windows. Let's do that now. I'm going to open up for the first time this USB type C bio key. And I have not done anything with this key yet. So we're going to go ahead and stick it into my machine. I'm going to try to do it with a USB type C to USB type A adapter. I do have USB C on my computer, but I have the USB type A right on the back of my keyboard. So it makes it really easy when I'm trying to press a whole bunch of different fingers on this thing to read my fingerprint rather than having it down here under my desk and trying to do the same thing. Okay, so let's try to do that. There are a few different ways that you can do the fingerprint enrollment. So you can do it directly in Windows 10 as long as you have version 1903 or higher. And of course, any version of Windows 11 will do it. For Mac OS, Linux Chrome OS, you can use Chrome 90 or later, and you can do that, uh, the enrollment through Chrome. And then you can also do it with the desktop Yubico Authenticator. So let me show you that first. So here's the Yubico Authenticator. You wanna make sure that you are on version 5.1, right here, so Yubico Authenticator 5.1. And then if I click on YubiKey, it says insert your YubiKey. Let's go ahead and try it. And we can see it's the YubiKey C Bio Fido Edition. And if I click here, I can add a pin. And then once you've added a pin, you can start enrolling your fingerprints. So this is how you do it through the Yubico Authenticator. Let me also show you how it's done through Windows. To do it in Windows, you wanna go Start, and then click on Settings. Then you wanna click on Accounts. Then you wanna click on sign in options. And now we have all of our various sign in options. One of the sign in options, again, this is Windows 10 version 1903 or higher. So if you don't see security key here, you probably need to update Windows. We're gonna click on security key and we're gonna say manage. So it says touch your security key. So I'm gonna to touch it. And here we go. Now notice I can't enroll any fingerprints yet because I have not set a pin code on this device. So first we need to add a security key pin. And the pin code can be anywhere from four to 128 digits. Now to keep things simple, I'm just gonna do a four digit pin, confirm that and then press okay. And now I can enroll my fingerprints. Now when you go to enroll your fingerprints, this device can store up to five fingerprints. I would recommend doing some fingers from each hand. The way that I do it is index finger on both hands and thumb on both hands. And uh, then you've got, you know, pretty much you're covering the bases, right? As long as you're using one of these four fingers, uh, you will be able to access the device. So let's go ahead and say set up, add in our pin. And now we're going to repeatedly lift and rest your finger on the sensor until the setup is complete. So let's go ahead and do that. Do 
you can see that it's sort of adding in little fingerprint things. There we go. So use your fingerprint the next time you want to unlock your device. Let's add another finger. This time I'm going to do my right thumb. Right, this time I will hold my keyboard up so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Here's my Yubico here. I'm going to do my left thumb. So we're just going tap, 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 tap. Usually takes about five or six taps. Let's do one final finger. This is going to be my left index finger. And here we can see it's reading it as I'm slowly tapping that finger. There we go. Okay, so I have now enrolled four fingers onto this YubiKey as well as set a pin code. So that's it. The key is all set up. If you wanted to reset it, you can use this reset and it'll probably just ask you for your pin and then basically wipe the key of all information. So let's go ahead and close this out. And now let's actually use the key with a service. So we're going to use it with GitHub. So if I'm logged into GitHub, I can come over here to my profile. I can say settings. Then we can click on account security. And then down here under two-factor authentication, we have security keys. And you can see I have four security keys authorized for GitHub. Let's go ahead and click edit. Use security key. And I can't use the one I'm about to enroll. So I'm going to change this. We're going to say security key. And I need to find a different one. So I'll use the USB type A bio key since I've already enrolled that with GitHub. I've plugged it in. We're going to touch it. And there we go. So that is FIDO2 authentication to get me into GitHub. Now if I scroll down, here we can see the four security keys that I already have added to my GitHub account. Let's go ahead and register a new security key. We're going to call this YubiKeyC Bio. And then we're going to say add. Okay, so let's see, making sure it's you. Okay, so I had to add my Windows Hello pin code. Now we are going to set up my security key. It says to set up your security key, sign into GitHub as Chris Crosstalk. We're going to say OK. And insert your security key into the USB port. And then it says touch your security key. So we're going to touch the key. And there we go. We've now added that key. Let's go ahead and log out of GitHub. Sign out. Now we're going to sign in. And we're going to say use security key to authenticate. And we're going to click on security key down here. Touch your security key. Boom. And we are logged in with our YubiKey C Bio biometric hardware key. So really easy to get started when you have a FIDO2 compatible service. And any other service is going to be very, very similar to the way that you saw me just set up uh, the security key for GitHub right there. Now let's talk about Microsoft and let's talk about Windows passwordless authentication because I think a lot of people might buy this key thinking, hey, what a great idea. I can have a biometric login for Windows. But unfortunately, it doesn't work with non-Azure Active Directory Windows clients. Or in other words, it only works if you have an organization that is running Microsoft Azure Active Directory and your client that you're trying to log into is a member of that domain. So that's great. If you have a company that really wants to secure things down with a biometric hardware key, then this will work if you're using Azure Active Directory. But what about for everyone else? Okay, so Yubico has a piece of software. If you come to their webpage and you choose products and you do computer login tools, they have this right here. So this is the Yubico login for Windows that you can download. So this is for non-Active Directory clients, but this does not use FIDO2. This uses a challenge response protocol for security, which means it does work with like the five series keys, but it does not work with the FIDO2 keys, right? It does not work with FIDO2 authentication. So you cannot use the Yubico login for Windows software with the new bio keys. It's just totally incompatible with the type of security that those keys facilitate. 
So Microsoft also doesn't have any level of FIDO2 support for local accounts on a computer. So non-active directory domain accounts on Windows. And Windows Hello only works with computers that have a TPM chip. TPM being trusted platform module or essentially for OEM manufacturers like Dell and HP, they've worked out deals with Microsoft to have an extra chip put into say like a laptop where when you open that laptop, they know that it's trusted hardware. And so then you can use Windows Hello for like the facial recognition or a fingerprint reader or something like that. But Windows Hello does not allow for external authenticators at all. It only works with that TPM chip. Now this all may change in the future if Windows Hello does end up working with external authenticators or if you know, Microsoft adds FIDO2 authentication to local accounts in Windows, you know, who knows what the future holds. Interestingly enough though, Microsoft does allow for FIDO2 authentication with their normal Microsoft accounts. So like if you log into account.microsoft.com to manage your own Microsoft account and you click on security, oh look, it's asking me, so it's asking me for a key. Like if I have, so I have the USB C bio key plugged in, which is not enrolled with Microsoft. So if I try it, touch your security key. Oh, security key does not look familiar. Please try a different one. So let me change this out. I will put in my USB type A bio key. And then when I touch that one, it does work just fine. Okay, so inside Microsoft account security, if I click on advanced security options, here we have all of the different security keys. So if I wanna add a new one, add a new way to sign or verify, we're gonna add a new security key. Let me plug in the correct key here. And we're gonna say next, okay, okay. Touch your security key. And now we can give it a name. YubiKey C bio, next, and got it. So again, it does work. So FIDO2 authentication does work with your Microsoft account. It just doesn't work with Microsoft Hello, at least not yet. So when I talk about choosing the right key for you, this is what I'm talking about, right? So FIDO2 is not as widely adopted as I would like it to be yet. So if you want a more well-rounded, versatile hardware security key, which I definitely recommend YubiKeys, but the YubiKey 5 series today to me is the better value just because it is more versatile. However, for organizations that are trying to provide better security for like Active Directory login or if you have specific applications that are FIDO2 compatible, the bio key is a higher level of security. So it's the old trade-off, right? It's ease of use versus higher security, right? And so Take a look at both and figure out which one is going to be right for you. And you might be saying, Chris, well, gosh, if they would just integrate TOTP codes into this YubiKey bio, it would be a perfect key. And I agree with you. Like, I think that's exactly correct. But, you know, think about it this way, right? The, the form factor on these things, are they're so thin that you can't really cram a lot of extra stuff in here, right? This has extra hardware to handle the OTP codes. The bio key has extra hardware to handle the fingerprint reading, right? So what they would have to do is essentially, you know, stack two of these on top of each other and make a YubiKey that's like twice as thick in order to get additional hardware inside this tiny little device. And so I guess my question is like, would you, the viewer, buy one of these YubiKeys if it had the biometrics, if it was all encompassing with TOTP uh, capability, but it was a little bit thicker than this tiny little form factor that they have. Is that something that you would be interested in buying? Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so that's gonna do it for my look at the YubiKey Bio series. Again, links to all the products that I talked about are below. Those are affiliate links. If you click on those links, we get a couple of bucks for the referral but it does not change your price at all. And we certainly appreciate any referrals that we get. Okay, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.